here coming at you today in Clash Royale. Today, I have a long, long requested guest finally here on the channel. I am going to indulge you guys with some amazing replays against very, very hard counters, and then I'll play a live match after we watch and study these replays. It is none other than Nova Sponge. He's currently 45th in the world. You guys probably already know what deck he runs, but he is notoriously good with a uh, Hog Exe NATO, the classic deck here, and he runs it with with obviously Hog, Exe, Nato, and Rocket, and uh, also Goblins and Knight in this deck, instead of some people opt for a faster cycle with Skeletons and Ice Golem, but he prefers this, the classic 3.3, and it's really, really good. With the Rocket in there, the downside is you can't combo it with the Hog Rider. The upside is, is that against difficult matchups that have two Hog Counters or three Hog Counters, such as all the Graveyard decks with Tombstone and Nato in them, you're able to just defend really really proficiently efficiently proficiently I think both and uh, able to pick up positive elixir trades and then convert them into that rocket spell cycle damage towards the end of the match anyway guys let's go ahead and start out with some great replays against other pro players at the top of ladder including as we start out here against carnage QW from Romanian warlords that's Royals right hand man but I want to start out against no aim cry and uh, No Aim Cry is playing, as you can see, a P.E.K.K.A. E-Wiz bridge spam deck, kind of a P.E.K.K.A. spam control. So I'm going to hop right into this one, because this one is really textbook. I think that Sponge might make one mistake here, but that's about it throughout the duration of this match. So let's go ahead and study his gameplay here and see if you guys can pick up on some of the tips and strategy that he implements in his gameplay and take it to your own inside the arena. This is mainly a trophy pushing a ladder deck versus a challenge deck or tournament level standard. Of course, you can use it in both, and I'm sure if you're really good at it, it, you can still do well in grand challenges, but this is make no mistake about it This is a really great trophy deck for you guys today So here we go We're just gonna start out just like with any deck pretty much unless you're playing like a really aggressive hog cycle or a really aggressive bait deck We're gonna start out defensively oriented. It's kind of reacting to what the opponent throws at us We want to identify what deck they're playing and what hog uh, rider counters they have and again if they have a lot of hog counters we can get around that using our rocket in the late game you don't want to be rocket cycling unless they give you value usually four plus value elixir wise uh, you're not going to be using the rocket in single elixir time so never start rocket cycling super early into the match that would be a mistake guys so here we go I think he might use a rocket right here I think he is going to so he plays an e-wiz and that's that's what I'm talking about four plus value single elixir time that's a good time to use a rocket there we take that tower down to 2377, but now we have about a three or four elixir disadvantage, so we're definitely going to have to get back on our heels and play some defense. Even though that Sponge had Hog Rider in his hands there, guys, doesn't mean that just because they drop a Pekka in the back, we're just going to go in with a Hog just because they dropped a heavy unit that counters the Hog in the back. We just use Rocket, so we're always going to shift our focus to just defending smartly and efficiently. So here we play the Execution in the left lane, and we know they're going to come at us in the right lane there. You can see the minions are ready as well and they do actually connect there on the right tower with the battle ram and they're going to get a decent amount of damage we're going to use the knight to buy us some time and then we're going to use the ice spirit as well a nice cleanup job there on the right and the opponent gives him a well played but still we're going to take some heavy damage to that royal ghost royal ghost i still think is probably one of the best cards in the game do you guys agree disagree i, I know it's difficult to level up the royal ghost but he's just so, for three elixir, he's so versatile of a unit. And the invisibility can be a real pain for the opponents to deal with. So here we go. It's going to be a big push coming in the left. You're going to see the power of uh, Exe NATO demonstrated right now, guys. A beautiful log. He was able to NATO everything together. And all we've used so far is what? An Ice Spirit, Goblins, and an Exe NATO. They're defending in a log on the left. But he came at us with, a, you know, he came at us hot there, guys. He had a P.E.K.K.A. and E.W.I.Z. A, uh, what else did he have? A Royal Ghost? I don't know. He had a bunch of crap, right? So we were able to deal with it. And then we get the Hog hit here. We get two Hog hits. And we knew that he had P.E.K.K.A. in the cycle. This is a very important important point if they have the P.E.K.K.A. in cycle or a really strong high DPS unit what you're going to want to do with this deck is make sure you combo especially the P.E.K.K.A. or a mini P.E.K.K.A. the heavy hitters right 
Make sure you combo with those goblins. They're going to help you out there. Do some DPS to the heavy hitter and also distract as the hog hopefully just walks or runs right by to the tower. So here we go again. We are in sudden death uh, uh, double elixir time here. And again, not a, not an easy matchup with the Ewiz and the Pekka. If it was just one or the other, you can move, you can work around that with this deck. But having two counters isn't necessarily an easy matchup here. But Sponge is going to send in that hog rider while he defends their beautiful catch on that bandit with the knife there getting a ton of value out of that knight in the right hand lane the opponent gives the good game but it's not over yet we do need to uh, it's going to take more than a rocket and a log if my math is correct to take down that left tower so we're going to have to go ahead and go through another defensive sequence first and uh another thing that you guys want to be aware of is not getting super cycle happy towards the end you know he saw that he had the tower down to 850 or so damage again we're going to need two logs there so we sent in one early log we're going to use a defensive log here we're going to kind of reload here in this match and now we have the tower down to a rocket plus log range there on the left. So a P.E.K.K.A. at the bridge, the opponent getting very, very aggressive here. So we want to make sure we can deal with this. We send in that uh, that rocket, and there it goes. Rocket down is going to take a log. We NATO everything back, and log is going to prevent anything from doing any extra damage to our tower. That was really well played by the opponent there, too. I don't think they made any really, like, really crucial mistakes throughout the course of that match. So it just goes to show you that this deck really can do well against any sort of deck out there. Let's go ahead and move on to the QW replay here. Another really difficult matchup. This was the one that I was talking about where when you run into a deck like this, it's the new meta graveyard deck, which I will be having on the channel probably tomorrow. Uh, something very similar to this deck, but not this deck. A version with the knight, and I have Carter uh, coming on voice to help me out and kind of walk me through that matchup in that deck. So stay tuned for that tomorrow. Today, we're going to talk about how to handle this deck as a hog player, now that was the one mistake that, that that I thought from last match that he made in this match, actually, thinking that Executioner could uh, could snipe that Barbarian. Not the case there. And here comes an Inferno Dragon. And what do we say, guys? I'm gonna pause for. Uh, oh, I missed the I missed the rocket midair. But yeah, basically a four elixir uh, investment by the opponent that we can kill with a rocket. We're gonna go ahead and take that opportunity, and he does there, taking out that Inferno Dragon. Now he's gonna be on his heels there, defending in the left lane. But a good job and good choice that you're gonna see throughout. Out this uh, this match here from Sponge in terms of his defensive troop selection answering against these graveyards. So pay special attention onto how he defends against graveyard. I think it will help you guys out when playing this deck too. As with any graveyard deck, guys, you really want to focus more on the troops at the bridge. Make sure you handle them because having that tower available to target the skeletons is really going to be half the battle when defending against the graveyard. So here we go again. Going to use an executioner. I I think we're going to go ahead and get the poison out of the opponent here. We do. Of course, poison won't kill the Executioner. So I think Sponge is thinking right now, do I do I switch towers or I just let this Executioner die? Luckily, Executioner does get even more value there, taking out that Tombstone. So it's a good time just to kind of let him die. We send in the Hog, and then we have to be ready defensively again. Notice that Knight placement again there by Sponge, guys. The Knight is going to be able to catch some of those Skeletons as they spawn in front of the King Tower. We use the Goblins behind the King Tower. Then the Knight's going to go ahead and finish off that Ice Golem as well well, getting tremendous value there out of that knight. Knight is like a, a mini version of the Lumberjack, right? Especially defense. He swings deceptively fast, not as fast as the Lumberjack. I think it's, what, 1.1 and 1.3? I could be off there, but either way, it, it's close. He swings very fast, so he's a, actually a decent kind of a tier 2 graveyard counter, the knight, but you want to make sure you take care of the troops coming down the lane as well, even if it means using a log a little bit early as we just saw there. And again, here, using the Executioner and the Goblin's on defense they get some more chip damage with that poison but we do get one swing on that hog rider basically we're sending in that hog every time they're prepping for a graveyard push making them devote some of their elixir to defense as well but he's not going crazy he's not going overboard sending in like a knight a hog and goblins that would be a common mistake that some people would make with this deck guys is it's not like hog cycle where you're always going to unload oh i have a defending a, a musketeer left over from defense well let's combo an ice golem and a hog boom let's go and then have our fireball ready it's not like that it's more of a chip deck with that's going to be incredibly defensively oriented so it's really out of any hog deck i'm thinking in the meta maybe aside from three musketeers this is going to be the only hog deck that you're not really playing super aggressively with a hog rider of course you can lean on the rocket again as we're seeing here in double elixir time so two matches in a row that we're going to end off the match here in rocket cycle range and once we have the tower in rocket log range we don't have to play any hogs anymore 
Of course, if we're given the opportunity, go ahead and do so. But it's better, I think, just from watching these replays, it's better just to defend first and get that rocket in cycle, wait till everything's kind of calmed down in the match, and then go ahead and end it here, as you're going to see Sponge do. So there it is, 4 HP down, and 151 remaining on his tower. So that last poison doing a, a little bit of damage there, but he was one kind of cycle ahead of the opponent there, so it wasn't quite as close as it may have looked. Okay, guys, let's go ahead and watch one more replay against Carnage. He said, wow, I think this is one of the hardest counters. The deck that Carnage is playing. You guys know Carnage's deck. I shared the Ice Bow deck maybe a week and a half ago. It was a really good video, guys. He played a live match and he went up against Gummy Bear head-to-head, -head, the Expo Gods. It was pretty awesome. But luckily in this matchup here, it's a hard counter. It could be looked at, viewed as a hard counter either way you look at it. Of course, Carnage does have the rocket, so he can rocket cycle two. He also has the NATO to activate King Tower uh, on the Hog, and he has a relatively fast cycle. I think his deck, let me say, see really quickly here, I think it's 3.1, is it? 3.3, so they're both 3.3 decks, so no one can really outcycle the other one in this matchup. Let's go ahead and watch it here, guys, and see how this one played out. I might go double uh, time early on here. Well, we'll see. I think, oops, that was a that was not the right matchup. But against Monkeys, oh man, you know that Monkeys is watching right now. He's a really, really good golem player, and uh, maybe we'll watch that one in double time too after my live match because you're going to know how to handle golem even though this deck does really, really well against golem. So here we go. It's going to be Sponge starting out here against, again, Carnage, probably the best expo player in the game, certainly in the conversation of being the best expo players. So I encourage you guys, I'll link that video if you guys want to uh, below. But again, we have a, a great counter to the expo in the rocket, so you're going to see kind of a, this match is going to get into a nice rhythm for both players, where both of them, basically, if you're Sponge, because we're going to watch from his point of view here, what Sponge is going to try to do in this matchup is always have his Knight ready to block the Expo, and then have his Rocket as the next card up to Rocket the Expo. So he's going to Hog, Cycle, 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 uh, Knight, Block, Rocket and then repeat, right? So you're going to see he, he seldomly, especially as we get into double elixir, seldom will he even use the executioner in this matchup because it doesn't present a ton of value and you have to keep your cycle going. We hear this all the time from pro players. Oh, I had to fix my cycle or I had to get my cycle correct. What do they mean by that? Essentially, they really just mean you want to make sure you have that, in this matchup, you want to make sure you have that rocket ready at all times when that expo is up or you want to have it as the next card while you block, aka distract that expo. So that's what we're going to see in this matchup here. And again, you're going to see the cycling here. He's, he cycles goblins in front of his uh, king tower. That's also going to prevent that mega minion from getting a hit on the right tower there. Of course, having to pause two times to swing or spit or whatever they do at the uh, the goblins there. So again, here comes the ice golem from Carnage, and we're going to start getting some log chip damage as well. Now, it might not seem like much, but a matchup like this, again, we're able to cycle for two elixir using the log and do a little bit more damage to the tower that we're focusing on in this matchup. And again here, we're ready with the rocket for that expo, and then we distract a little bit there. It does get a, a maybe, what, 50, 100 damage with that temporary lock, and that's going to happen here and there in this matchup. It's a really, really grindy, difficult matchup, and as we enter into double elixir time now, you guys are going to start to see that rhythm that I just talked about. It, it's going to be like really redundant, if you will. So here again, we're leaking elixir or two, but we have the knight ready. We didn't want to drop the knight right away because we want to make sure we caught that expo. We didn't take some extra damage again, and this time it works out. The expo stays locked onto that knight, and then the knight kind of, you know, goes to his death in the right lane, but we're able to take care of that expo again. Now remember though, every time he places that expo, if we're using the knight plus the rocket, and we're just throwing away the knight, we're really using 9 Elixir to defend against that Expo for 7 Elixir. So it's slowly but surely here, Carnage is getting the positive Elixir trades. Something that you kind of want to be aware of and make sure that we keep aggressive. You know, seldomly throwing in a Rocket Cycle or a Hog here and there and keeping in the lead in this match or getting a lot of logs. This is what, the third log I think that they've used on that right tower? And it's starting to add up here. At the, as a matter of fact, at this point, we can't Rocket Cycle because we're still saving our Rocket for the Expo. So it's important imperative that we do get some damage onto that right tower and you guys can see how a match like this could easily become a complete stalemate. I'm gonna go double time here guys because it, again it does get kind of really repetitive here. Again we're using our knight, we're using our rocket, we're using our log 
and just rinse and repeat. We have recycling the goblins, recycling the ice spirit behind the tower. We're using another log on that right tower. That's three or four logs now on the right tower. And then again, we have our executioner this time. We used our rocket. So either way, executioner and knight are our two big bodies in this deck, right? That we want to have ready for that expo. And again, this time we have the rocket ready again for the expo. We didn't catch that mega minion, but I think we will catch it on the next time. This time, I think that not that previous hog, but the hog before that got another swing on that tower. And again, we missed that mega minion there. I think maybe the next time we'll catch it there, but you can see that Carnage, we're, we're getting his pattern down as well. So we send in the hog this time. Are we going to get a swing? We will. And that's going to be GG. We didn't get the mega minion there, but we did get the ice wizard. And now with a minute left in this match, eight 69 damage on the the right tower so we know we need a few logs we also need to make sure we save one rocket for that tower there and i think it's going to happen pretty soon here one more rocket onto the expo no excuse me we didn't have enough time to cycle back to another rocket, so we had to go with the rocket log there, and that was the right decision. We end up picking up the dub against it. Carnage, a really, really good player. So guys, let me show you, let me do a live match with it. And then I'll show that golem replay in double elixir time. I'm still low in trophies, so I hesitate even doing a live match. But uh, what we're going to do is, uh, you know what? I'm going to fast forward through this matchup here because I don't want to show you against a level 12. I'm kind of bullying at this point, so I'm going to cut this match out, and I'll be right with you in the next match. All right, you guys know what? I'm way too low in trophies. I keep facing level 12s under level cards. It's just not fun and it's not good content. So I want to go ahead and watch the monkeys replay. I promise I will trophy push tonight and I will do live matches later on in the week. I commit that to you guys. I promise. All right, so here we go. Let's go ahead and watch the one against monkeys. You guys can see how well this deck can perform against a golem beatdown deck or against beatdown of any kind and fashion. Really, really strong. And it's using the same principles that we talked about watching the other matches. Being slow early on, being defensive early on, taking your opportunity, knowing when to send in the Hog Rider. So early on here, we see the Lumberjack, and we pretty much know what deck he has. We're going to go ahead and get that activation. Remember, you guys can activate against all kinds of troops with a Tornado. You can do it with a Goblin Barrel. You can do it with a, with a Bandit, a Lumberjack, a Royal Ghost, a Golem. There's basically a Hog Rider, Royal Hogs. There's a lot of activation techniques now in the game. Almost every deck you run into, well, maybe not every deck, but a lot of to run into there's a way to get your a minor there's a way to get your king tower activated so that should be your first priority in the, any match using this deck or any nato deck for that matter so here's the first big golem push from monkeys guys he's gonna come down this lane hot night witch we have a baby dragon we're gonna delay as long as we can with that nato and then line everything beautifully up for the executioner and this first push just really shows you guys it really illustrates and remember we have that king tower activated to help us out as well we could have used one more hit there or one swing excuse me from the executioner to take out that baby dragon but we do take well, a little bit of damage now the opponent has their king tower activated here so or we actually they don't but it doesn't really matter we're gonna go ahead actually they do i take it back again it does matter uh we're gonna go ahead and since he used the nato to activate his king tower against our hog you know when, you're, when we're using our rocket we're always going to take that extra damage onto the king tower as well you never know it and it might end up being a two tower or a, or a three crown game and having that extra damage always helps for some reason i i see here here and there some people even if they have a king tower activated already they're still not using the rocket or the fireball or whatever against the king tower you might as well right so again it's going to be rinse and repeat here guys we send in the hog in the right lane and then we have the executioner the nato and the knight to play defense in the left lane now unfortunately that lumberjack does lock onto our right tower that's going to do a ton of damage actually more damage from that just that solo lumberjack than we had from that entire this push right here not the previous push included so we're gonna go ahead and send in a perfect time to send in the hog against the golem uh, matchup is right after you defend either right after they pump up or right before they pump up usually they're gonna be forced to have to defend and use some of their defensive troops and that's a way that you guys can ruin aka mess up their cycle and get them off their game so here comes a golem down the right lane this time for monkeys and we have executioner already at the ready on defense and we go ahead and we send in that hog in the opposite lane we get that left tower down to 908 and monkeys is forced to use a night witch to defend against that hog rider which is a night witch that hey he can't use in this push on offense 
So we're playing some smart defense there on the left. We want to make sure we, we maintain and keep both towers alive here. And Monkeys is putting the pressure on here in the left-hand lane, knowing that we don't have the enough elixir at the time to play Executioner. We can now, though, and we have NATO at the ready if we need it. And the opponent this time, Monkeys, NATO's our troops away. He's trying to get that Executioner away, but now we have double Executioner in the right. We get another hog hit in the left, and you guys know what that means. It's rocket time. We can finish this match off right now against a very, very good golem player, Monkeys. So guys, that is going to do it for today's video. Finally coming through with Nova Sponge and, of course, Hog XC NATO. I hope this video helped you guys out against a variety of different matchups. Ash, where's the Lava Loon? Well, luckily, this is the number one deck that counters Lava Loon is the one that you're looking at right here. So hopefully you guys know the strategy without me having to show you every replay. So guys, check out Sponge's Instagram. That's how I finally got a hold of this guy. And also, uh, his player stats and profile page. Thanks to StatsRoyale.com in the description below, along with the deck link in every single video. Guys, check out my second channel too, where I upload bonus replays, including some against Samuel, uh, the Sponge versus Samuel here, who's another ladder beast, a ladder goat, on the second channel where I put all the extra replays that I didn't share with you guys inside this video. That link will be in the show notes as well, along with the Carnage video. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Huge shout out to Bren Chong, my YouTube partner. Check out his information as well, somewhere down there in my busy description. Guys, thank you, and as always, Take care, guys.